What is the most common cause of downtime? Unnecessary downtime. Would you say it's hydraulics, electrics, mechanical failures? If I was to tell you it was grease systems, would you be surprised by that? Whether it's a lawn fault or what I like to call a Kodak moment where it's left to develop like this one. Today we are going all in on grease systems. Pat from North Australian Heavy Mechanical. Like, subscribe and leave me a comment. Comments are how we learn, right? That's how we get better is by asking questions. There's no such thing as a stupid question, right? Uh, today we're going through a basic system. It's gonna be a two-part series. Uh, the next part I'm gonna go through the line A and B systems because there's quite a bit more to those. Uh, same principles apply and then we're gonna go on how to set a bucket up correctly because there's quite a bit involved in setting a bucket up correctly. Uh, so today we're going to go what's what's in a basic grease system uh, so whether it's a, a 40 ton excavator or a thousand ton shovel right they all utilize the same components and the same principles right uh, how can we test it so you would have seen the videos uh, they're probably one of my most popular videos is me powering things up with the milwaukee battery uh, i'm going to go through and show you how you can test a, an inline injector effectively uh, and how you can test your dump valves and pumps as well too so uh i'm gonna go run through and give you some examples of what to keep an eye out for to avoid scenarios like these ones uh i've got plenty of failure videos in my in my archives of uh of failures left from from grease systems that are not correct correctly set right uh or you know once you and then once i show you a few few scenarios what to look out for uh on your inspections on your services whether you're an owner operator an operator you, you can spot these failures well before they happen right uh, so once you know about these uh it's sort of hard to unsee and then you know you, you're constantly looking for things right and, and you'll be picking things up well and truly before they fail and, and that's the old saying prevention is better than cure right that's what this is all about i spent a lot of time over the years believe it or not working on grease systems uh down the pit sweating it out and today i'm going to simplify them for you uh because i think it's the fundamentals right if you want to get into hydraulics electrics uh grease systems are a great way to do that right they operate under the same principles uh, there's a lot less components in them so it's a lot easier to get your head around so i always tell people if you're looking to get into hydraulics start by learning a grease system same principles as an air system uh you know they're all the same fundamentals so this is going to be a good episode uh there's plenty of videos where i've got heaps of failures so hang around for that uh let's get into it cheers all right so before we go and diagnose the system we must know what's in it right we have a controller that contains our logic depending on the machine uh so the prescribed times that it, it needs to make pressure in uh, generally located in the cab or on the the, the grease pump itself so uh, you got your manual actuation switches in there as well too we have a pump that creates the flow electric air hydraulic uh, air ones tips for those if you got one that's not pumping rip the airline off spray some crc cycle it and give it a tap see if it comes free right now on off solenoid if it's a hydraulically driven one important normally closed right why is this important dump valve our dump valve is normally open so uh, the reason being, uh, when you cycle it, uh, the pressure builds up, pushes the plunger down, and that's what shoots out our grease, right? So if you mix them up, you can end up holding pressure on your injector and it won't be allowed to reset, right? So the system will just make pressure really quickly. I've had this a few times. Uh, and and you, you're gonna have an attachment that's not getting grease, right? This is super important. Uh, so normally closed, normally open. Some of them will run the one where when the solenoid, when, the, when this powers up, it'll power up and close our dump valve. So uh, that's in a fairly primitive circuits, but it, that they are still in, the, that star, still in use today, right? So then we have a pressure transducer. This is what monitors for, uh, monitors our pressure. So, you know, it, it, it's going back to our controller and it's gotta make, a set pressure in a set amount of time right then we have our lines and injectors couple of important tips with our lines and injectors right number one these little caps are for our metering tubes when you remove these make sure you put them back on because you will just end up shooting grease out of these if you lose these the injector is basically redundant it needs to have this cap on it another important tip right so with these injectors when you wind them out you get a bigger shot of grease because it allows a larger stroke wind them in less right i see this all the time and 
it's people leaving the caps off there's super important i've found uh buckets at times especially because buckets are in really dirty areas uh with the caps off and dry points because they've filled up with dirt and it's it sees the injector and then the injector is no longer injecting it's it's stuck in the in it, it's stuck in the held down position not allowing it to reset uh that's quite a common one i see that all the time i go through you know quite a bit of effort to, to make sure these caps are secure so do not send it uh if it is you know even up on attachments i've seen before they'll build up dirt in there and seize that injector and then it's redundant so uh that's some advice that's what that's that's what's in the circuit next we're going to go through how to test it right all right so approaching the excavator that has a grease fault right uh straight up we're going to go look for excessive grease even before we get up in the cab and cycle it so if you've got uh excessive grease dripping off the attachment or say one or multiple injectors i'll give you an example uh, you'll see an attachment here that's uh, basically covered in grease right uh, you're looking for excessive grease straight up because majority of the times you will just have a line leak uh, resistance loss so you've got a pressure loss uh, and that system's not making pressure in time right so uh, some tips when you go up into the cab uh, always make sure you're at high rpm right because we're utilizing in our large excavators we're utilizing servo oil which can be fed from a gear pump now flow and pressure this is where it comes down to you can be making pressure so you can have 55 bar of servo pressure with a gear pump uh, through all rpms but you're not getting the flow out of that gear pump, right? So that's why it's important to have it at high idle. Always check these systems at high idle because you're not getting your flow out of your pump, right? Uh, yeah, another basic one is just at a glance, go and check your servo oil. Make sure you've got so, uh, the servo pressure is, is correct, right? So a uh, simple one straight up. So just go and cycle the system, see if it's slow to make pressure. Uh, see if it makes pressure in the prescribed time right and then it should have a hold pressure now what our hold pressure does is it will cycle the pump it will activate our valve for our, our, our solenoid to power our pump up with hydraulic oil uh, and then it will power our dump valve up at the same time uh, then once it makes pressure so prescribed pressure might be 250 bar it will then drop power away from our pump and then hold power on our dump valve for say a prescribed amount of time could be 10 to 20 seconds and what this does is it tests for small amounts of leaks right for leakage in the system so if you have multiple bypassing injectors that will cause a fault as well too right so uh just quickly when you go to your dump valves as well too when you cycle the system most of them have this little din style connector which has an led on it so you, you can go straight away and see uh if that that, that that those solenoids are getting power right some of them are hydraulic on the uh, lee bears sometimes they'll uh, loop a line in and run the one solenoid and they'll have a dump valve that's activated by hydraulic oil right uh so move it on from there you know if you want to confirm that your pump is producing flow it's as easy as removing the line cycling it and seeing if that produces flow then the dump valve as well too i've had not tons of these, but a few of these, they will get sticky at times and they won't close completely. So you can just take your line, your dump line off that goes to the tank, uh, run a cycle and and see if that dump valve is, is losing a small amount of grease, right? Uh, because it's so close to the pump, they do have a dramatic effect on the circuit. So uh, again, that's where the Milwaukee battery comes in. So you, you power your pump up and your dump valve up. So power your, your pump up you'll see your pump kick into gear the system will make pressure once that system makes uh, prescribed pressure you can disconnect it say 250 bar disconnect it and leave your dump valve activated and see if you'll see i'll include a video that system should hold tight once it's made pressure if it's slowly dropping off or rapidly dropping off it just means that you've got a leak and it could either be multiple bypassing injectors or just a line leak as simple as that right uh it is fairly simple uh to to, to approach these systems uh they that, that they're looking for a pressure loss right so that, that's what the the, the sensor is in there for right it, it, it's monitoring that system to make sure it makes pressure because it is such a crucial system uh for an excavator to have it uh that you know they're simple but they i've seen some grease folds really blow over right and then when it comes to testing your injectors most of the time your injectors will have a prescribed setting in the uh in the schematic right uh so that's done by 
that adjuster there you wind that out so obviously if you wind it out that means that it will give you a bigger shot of grease you wind it in it gives you a less shot of grease and now i used to take the lines off all the time and just get a massive like it just makes a massive mess and it's sort of hard to identify when you're on your own but i found out recently you can take that little cap off make sure you keep those caps don't lose them and slip one of these over it so this is a, a measured metering tubes from hdsa right so it's a uh you know it, it's marked and there is a, a prescribed measurement for each uh injector so you can go and slip that on you don't even have to be there right you can go away cycle the system uh and 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 it'll give you the it'll tell you the health of that injector but when these are when these are failed right usually it's an o-ring in here and when the pressure comes in uh it pushes the plunger down and that's what injects the grease but there's an o-ring in there so if that o-ring fails it'll just completely it'll just keep sending grease to that system so if you've got enough of these that are bypassing uh you're going to get a system fault right eventually now with the metering tubes yes you could just get sos sample i know all about that but there is nothing better than having a professional measurement to take back to a customer because these things surprisingly you, you probably find they're a couple of hundred dollars each right so if you've got a customer that's uh penny pinching they're going to want a measurement i found over my career there is nothing better than a measurement to take back to them if you can literally give them that you know that that's where it should be at number four and it's all the way out here they that they then know that they look at numbers and and screens they're not looking at uh oh yeah it's fucked mate that's that's not a good enough answer right so grease systems are, are, are pretty basic right so it's just a matter of sometimes getting creative and getting the milwaukee battery out and they're not too scary not too scary right um uh, you know I've, I've had heaps of grease faults they're the, the most common the most common fault you're going to come across with an excavator and uh the next we're going to run through some of my failure reels and what you can do to uh minimize these failures and pick them up before they happen right all right so what are we looking for when we're approaching our excavators whether it be uh in inspection or a service uh you're an owner operator you want to keep an eye on things and and know what you're looking for so we're looking for excessive grease build up right so if you have one point that's building up grease uh more than the others that's a a, a sign that you've got by, bypassing injectors right uh i'll include a video of, a, of of grease building up on a on a point uh track frames as well too great example if you've got a track frame that's mounding up grease and then the other track frames got next to nothing on it you know that there's an issue there right so uh yeah excessive grease when you pull your machine up it dripping off it in in certain points i'm always looking for it when i when i when i pull up to a service i'm looking for grease dripping off the machine i'm constantly looking at it and once you know these things you can't unsee them and you'll pick it you'll pick a failure well and truly before it happens right so another one is is dry pins we're looking for dry pins and uh dry pins go hand in hand with ear tags that are grabbing right i'll show you some uh some videos here of of ear, ear tags that have been grabbing you know, it's a giveaway that you've got pins and bushes uh that are grabbing right and it's it, it, it's a it, it's a giveaway right so uh generally what you'll find is you've got a dry bore there as well too so uh noisy pins right uh noisy pins you can utilize your temp guns pen pins should sit around that ambient temperature maybe a little bit above if you've got one that's sitting eight to ten degrees hotter than the others it's it, it's a no-brainer right? I, I do my digger inspections with my temp gun now hot rollers as well too the onk has run a, a lubricated roller uh same thing once that machine's been tramming i'll go and temp shoot everything right so another giveaway for the lee bears especially is broken grease rings right they have a metal band in there so when you're doing your inspections you see one of those metal bands that's broken on a lee bear go and do movement checks because chances are you've got excessive movement in that bush and and that that's what what's broken that ring so uh that ring is around a, a an o-ring and you get excessive movement in that pin and bush it's going to break it right and it, it's it's a telltale i'll include a clip here of an excavator that uh, that that has that exact scenario right uh and 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 then we're looking for um so when we're when we're dealing with anything to do with grease right we're, we're purging things always purge your lines i can't stress this enough uh especially in the a and b systems uh you'll get phantom faults with your initiators uh that'll be next episode but always when dealing with uh grease always purge your lines uh it, it doesn't matter what side of the circuit it's on because 
you know, you might have a grease line that's 10 foot long, right? Uh, for the machine to fill that 10 foot long line, it might take half a shift, right? So then that bush is running without grease for half a shift. Uh, and then you'll get phantom faults out of it as well too. So uh, hopefully you've gotten something out of today's episode. Next episode, we're going to go through the uh, the O and K system, which is the A and B, which is our VSL and VSG systems uh, using our VSL and VSG uh, injectors. I'm going to run you through the initiators and, and the changeover valve. Uh, hopefully you've gotten something out of today. If you're still here, smash the like button, subscribe, and leave me a comment. Cheers.